When first hearing of Aegis Defenders, my interest was perked upon learning the game mixes classic platforming with tower defence. What's even better is that developers at Guts Department have managed to make this gameplay transition within their levels not only feel organic but relative to the story. It's this seamless fluctuation between gameplay mechanics, some excellent writing and a truly awe-inspiring hand-painted pixel world that makes Aegis Defenders an adventure you should definitely embark on. The first thing that stands out when starting the game is just how stunning the environments look. These hand-painted layers of pixel artwork really make the world of Elam feel alive and a pleasure to play through. I'll often stop just to admire an ancient relic or a vista in the background. The story of Aegis Defenders sees you controlling a group of ruined hunters. This party starts with just two members, a grandfather and their granddaughter. Although other characters will join the party as you venture into the oppressive world of Elam, the main through line sticks with these characters, which makes for some meaningful conversations and emotional interactions between the two family members. As I previously mentioned, the world of Elam is a stunning one, but it's also a very interesting one, with lore hidden around almost every corner. What's even better about the fancy rich setting is that the game isn't shy on providing a backstory, which often comes through conversations between characters. These short text-based conversations do a brilliant job of continuously perking your interests, which is mostly down to that excellent writing and digestible length. So what about the mixed up gameplay that Aegis Defenders offers? Well, I'm pleased to say it's bloody brilliant when you're playing alone anyway. Almost all the levels start with a platforming section, which is more puzzle based than combat based. The puzzles these nostalgic sections offer progress in difficulty at a perfect rate. Although some of the later puzzles had me stumped, I never felt like I couldn't work out the answer. In many ways, these platforming sections of Aegis Defenders reminded me a lot of the classic title The Lost Vikings, where certain characters could only access certain areas, making switching between them on the fly a key dynamic. Although this platforming acts as a contrast to the frantic tower defence climax of each level, they also act as a resource gathering opportunity. Each character in the game is assigned a colour, similar to elemental abilities, and each character has their own unique resource. Clue, the granddaughter needs flowers, and Bark, the grandfather, needs golden rocks. Later characters also have their own resource. This individually tied resource emphasis encouraged me to hunt every area of the platforming sections, all in preparation for the big tower defence finale. If you hadn't guessed it by now, each level finishes with a tower defence section, which is triggered upon finding a new ruin or ancient artefact. These climactic stages challenge you to see off waves of enemies, all in the hope to protect the relic from damage, and the amount of damage it can take depends on your progress in the game. It's these frantic and tactically challenged defence stages that are no doubt the best part of Aegis Defenders. Just like the resources, the tunnels in which the enemies will spawn from are assigned their colour, meaning a character attacking these enemies will deal three times the amount of base damage. Couple this with a large combination of traps, turrets and barricades that you can set up, all which require a unique multiplication of character's resources, and each wave of enemies requires a lot of tactical thought. However, the game only gives you 45 to 60 seconds to gather these resources, lay traps and repair turrets before the next wave of enemies is bearing down on you. In the heat of these mini battles, situations can get very tense, especially when resources are running low. What I loved about the tower defence stages of each level was the real sense of triumph the victory screen brought. Every victory is down to you as the player, how effectively you position the team and manage your resources. Aegis Defenders does offer local co-op, and although having a human player during the platforming sections offered little difference, they do offer a huge advantage in the final stages of a level. If anything, they offered too much of an advantage. When playing with a friend, I rarely felt any tension, or was never juggling the decision of which character to control or which defence to repair, which are arguably some of the best emotions the game offers. As you'd expect, finishing a level grants you with currency to spend on new items or upgrade the items that you can craft. Age Defenders features two types of currency, rep points and gems. The gems are pretty standard. The more enemies you kill or the better you do on a level, the more gems you'll receive, which can be used to buy new weapons for the different characters. The rep points, or RP points as the game refers to them, are a little different. Although you are rewarded some for finishing a level, you're also rewarded them during conversations, with the amount dependent on how you respond. The concept of this is fine, but I never really knew what response would return the most points, and it felt like the goalposts for this continuously changed. 
One minute a sassy response would give me three points, next time it would only give me one. And the fact that these points are tied to how you upgrade your craftable items mean that missed opportunities can feel pretty frustrating. On the whole, Aegis Defenders offers a fun, tense and downright beautiful adventure for a fancy rich world of Elam. The seamless transition between platforming and tower defence made each level feel unique. Although the puzzle sections are fun and latter stages do offer a challenge, the start of the show is the frantic tactical rush that every level offers at its climax. If you want to experience Aegis Defenders at its finest, then I recommend you venture into this world alone. Bringing a friend just makes it too easy. For more indie game reviews, why not check out our recent review of Attack of the Earthlings? Or to see what indie games that we recommend you should be looking out for in February, why not check out February Hotlist? And to keep up to date with the latest indie game news, reviews and previews, make sure you subscribe and check out indie-credible.com.